Umran Ubayt al-Maqdis, the hadith of Sayyid Sunan of the Haqi, narrated by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when Jerusalem is sent to stage, and we see Jerusalem sent, moving to center stage when Trump recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Umran Ubayt al-Maqdis, Karabu Yatrib. At that time, Yatrib, now known as Medina, has it, is in forlorn desolation. That is the time when Karabu Yatrib Khuruj al Malhara, the Great War will take place. That is where we are now. The Great War will take place. The Malhama or Armageddon. Is there life on earth after that? Nuclear war? Yes, there will be. <laughs> because Surah Al-Rahman tells us that not all the missiles will be able to fly on that day. Surah Al-Rahman tells us some of the missiles won't fly and others <laughs> will not fly in the direction they're supposed to fly. Because Allah sent angels at the battle, in the battle of Badr. And Allah can send thousands of angels in this war which is coming. And so not all missiles will fly on that day. And not all of them will fly in the direction they're supposed to fly. So this is not going to be the end of the world. If you read Surah Al-Rahman, you know this is not the end of the world, no. So after the Malhamah, there is still life on earth. And the Prophet said, Khuruj al-Malhamah, Fathul Constantinia. That the conquest of Constantinople takes place after the Malhamah. The conquest of Constantinople will take place after the Malhamah. For those who still have the capacity to think, and not all people can think anymore today, has the Malhama taken place yet? The Great War, Armageddon? Not from our perspective. Because the Malhama will take place when 99 out of every 100 will die in that war. And there's never been a war like that in history. There's never been a war like that in history, where 99% of all combatants have died, have been killed. So the Malhama has not as yet taken place. It's difficult for Turkey and for the Balkans <coughs> to stomach that. But I can't help you, you have to help yourself. I am teaching you the truth. Others may have taught you other things. The Malhama has not as yet taken place. And so the conquest of Constantinople prophesied by Nabi Muhammad has not as yet taken place. Whether you like it or whether you don't is irrelevant to us. This is the truth. This is not Hollywood. Well, why the conquest of Constantinople after the Malhama? Because we know that Allah is intervening in the Malhama. Because Allah says in Surah to Rahman, and I love it, oh yes, I love it. Lakum We're gonna deal with you. You who are loaded with sin. We're gonna deal with you. And then he tells us how he's gonna deal with them. Your solo alaykuma. شُوَازٌ مِنْ نَارٍ وَنُحَسٌ فَلَا تَنْتَصِرَانٍ I'm going to send against you a flash of fire which will be followed by smoke and at that time there will be none to help you that looks like nuclear war to me so Allah is going to deal with them and if Allah intervenes in the Malhama, it must be by Allah's design that the conquest of Constantinople takes place after the Malhama, not by accident. 
So why should Allah ordain that the conquest of Constantinople should take place after the Malhama? Answer? Because our Christian allies, those who are following Nabi Isa alayhi salam, they need the Basras to come to the Mediterranean. And these Christians control the Basras. They control it through their ally, the Ottoman Empire. And then they control it through NATO and this secular state of Turkey, which is a member of NATO. But now, after the Malhama, goodbye to NATO. So the conquest of Constantinople can take place not with a Christian army, a Muslim army. The Christians must not make the mistake. Let me use this message to send a message to them. Don't make the mistake to send an army to conquer Constantinople. Because if you do that, the Dajjal will be very happy. He will unite the whole world of Islam against you. So leave it to us, we will liberate Constantinople. So the first implication of the liberation of Constantinople is that our Christian allies with whom we make an alliance will now be able, be able to pass through the Bosphorus to come into the Mediterranean. And that's bad news for Israel. But there's a second reason for the conquest of Constantinople. And that is that when we conquer Constantinople, when we conquer Constantinople, we return Hagia Sophia to the Christian world. And we'll offer an apology to the Christian world for what the Ottomans did, which was disgraceful, which was shameful, which was sinful to take the house of Allah, which is a church, or a synagogue, or a temple. This is what Surah Al-Hajj says. That you take the temple, or the church, or the synagogue, or the cathedral of the Christian people, and you convert it into a masjid, you are committing a sin. You are violating Allah's command in the Quran. So when the conquest of Constantinople takes place and we return Hagia Sophia to the <coughs> Orthodox Christian world, that will seal the alliance. This is the Christian cathedral of the Orthodox Christian people. This is their major, more foremost cathedral in the world. And this has been the most important cathedral for them for 1,000 years. So it was not by accident, not at all, but by satanic design that the Sultan Muhammad Fatih, when he conquered Constantinople, the first thing that he did was to take this cathedral and convert it into a masjid. It was by satanic design it was meant to sabotage the end time friendship and alliance between the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Ummah of Nabi Isa alayhi wa sallam. That's why Sultan Muhammad Fatih disgracefully and shamefully and manifestly sinfully took this cathedral and converted it into a masjid to the eternal shame and disgrace of the world of Islam. And so now we know <laughs> that we, the reason why the conquest of Constantinople takes place after the Malhara is so that when we conquer Constantinople, we can then return this cathedral to the Orthodox Christian world. And the dagger which has been planted into their hearts will be withdrawn and the blood will stop flowing and the alliance with Rome will then be cemented. But there are those who say, how can you have an alliance with the people and how can you call them Christian when they worship Jesus as God? 
and they declare that he is the son of God. And this is shirk. And the Quran declares that Allah is prepared to forgive all sins but not shirk. What answer do we have to give? The answer is do not take any verse of the Quran in isolation because you could be ending up misguided. You would end up declaring that Iblis was an angel, <laughs> which is what they believe. Proper methodology is to go to all the verses of the Quran, not the one. Here is one verse which says that Allah will not forgive shirk. But look at the other one now. Surah Al-Ma'idah And Allah speaks to Nabi Isa alayhi salam and asks him, Did you say to the people to worship me and my mother as gods beside Allah? Did you do that? And he said, No, I never did that. I never taught them anything other than what you taught me. Well, then he ends by saying, If you punish them for this belief that I am God, the Son of God, if you punish them, then they are your servants and you have the right to punish them. But if you forgive them, you doubt me that this is in the Quran? Do you doubt that? that? Yes, this is in the Quran. Go check it out. But if you forgive them, then you are the forgiving, the merciful, including therefore the possibility that the entire Christian world which worships Jesus as God and as the Son of God can be forgiven by Allah if He chooses to. So it's not for us to pass judgment. It's for Allah to pass judgment.